in the garden. The sentence of death. And the Lord Yahweh caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord Yahweh had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 through 22. Pleasure to talk with you again. All of you that are present are being blessed by being pleasant and being present. Also, it's wonderful to have a good attitude in the work that you're doing to affect my release, which, as I have stated often, is also your release. I must bring to your attention several scriptures and it's going to be a blessing to you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in Yudhe Wavhe, which raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Deliver you from what? Death. This scripture proves that Adam and all of the descendants of Adam have been under the sentence of death that is within yourselves. I being born along with you as the seed of Abraham, we all coming through the loins and the seed of Abraham, all of us have been under the sentence of death. So let us look at Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. The book of Hosea, chapter 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. So here I am come to ransom you from the power of the grave. And I'm here to redeem you from death. And you'll understand to perfection in just a few short minutes how powerful and profound that really is. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. I know that so many of you felt through the years that you had already been delivered from death. Quote, He being Yudhe Wafe, Beth Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wafe, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, me. I will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord Yudhe Wafe, Beth Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of my people I shall take away from off all the earth. For Yudhe Wafe has spoken it. So let us now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 14 and 15. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Yudhe Wavhe, Beth Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wavhe. But even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when you shall turn to Yudhe Wafe, Beth Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wafe, when you shall turn to Yahweh Ben Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. Now, I am that spirit, in verse 17. And where the spirit, where my spirit is, 
there is liberty. So I am liberty, though I myself have been slain and put in a tomb, in a grave. And I will reveal something to you about that next week, dealing with my being in the grave. But tonight, I want to carry you through a few shocks of the scriptures that I have given you thus far. Since you are all under the sentence of death, then you will need your synonym finder. And in your synonym finder, you're going to find some shocking revelations that have been there all the time. In the meantime, I'm going to carry you back to where I have taught you over the years about Yahweh putting Adam to sleep. And this was prior to Eve being made and a rib being taken from Adam. That was in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 21. Genesis 2, 21. And the Lord God, Yudhe Wafhe, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And Yudhe Wafhe took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. In verse 22, and the rib which the Lord Yahweh had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And then Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now we see no evidence here that Adam ever woke up. In verse 21, he was caused to be in a deep sleep. It fell upon Adam, caused by Yudhe Wafe. He didn't go to sleep on his own. He was not under anesthesia from someone else. But this was caused by Yudhe Wafe myself and in verse 21 he didn't wake back up in verse 22 he was brought the a woman was brought to him and he was never brought back to his original state so she was brought to him while he still slept in a deep sleep okay and he was talking he was talking but he still was not out of his deep sleep. Yudhe Wafe brought her to him. He didn't know where she was. So Yudhe Wafe brought her to him. And he saw her for the first time. So evidently, Yudhe Wafe told him that she came from him. But he didn't know it. Now before he was put to sleep, he named everything consciously as a wide awake man and understood the nature and the characteristic of all creation. All things that Yuhei Wafe made, he brought it to Adam for Adam to name, and he understood the distinguishing characteristics from one thing to another thing. And he gave it a name according to his character. But here, he was unable to give her a name according to her character. So, he was still in a deep sleep while this happened. Now, since Yuhei Wafe put him in a deep sleep and he never woke up, then that means that from that point, uh, his descendants from him would be in a sleep. That's why it was Abel uh, that was killed by Cain. Uh, Abel was in a sleep, this same sleep. He was suffering from this same problem that Adam had, or he would have been aware of what Cain was trying to do and what Cain was going to do. He would have been aware. Had Adam not been put to sleep, then Eve could never have seduced him. I don't really want to teach a whole lot about that tonight because I have a point that I want to get to, but there's so much wisdom and knowledge and understanding for you to have on this point in the garden, and I'm the only one on the planet that could possibly teach you. Uh, you can't go find it in another book but yet uh, I can lead and guide you throughout the scriptures and then you'll have it verified for you. And all of my teachings are always verified for you who search them. Now, in the meantime, here you have a man who is totally unaware of his surroundings. His sleep was so deep that uh, he didn't feel a rib being taken from him. He didn't see himself being opened up. 
he was opened up. So he was opened up. And then you hey wife hey closed it up. See, so something was opened up and something was closed. And he remained in this sleep. Now, I'm ready to take you for the purposes of this evening to your synonym fight. Um, and then you look up sleep. And the very last synonym of sleep is death. The very last synonym of sleep in your synonym finding, and you who have one there in class, you see that it is death. So here, Yudhe Wafe caused Adam to go into a deep death state, a deep state of death. Then, as you turn to death in your synonym finder, you find necrosis. So Adam was suffering from necrosis, like negroes do. Negroes, necrosis. Now, then you keep going in the number one, uh, under the synonym finder of death, under number one explanation, synonyms, you find that it's brain dead. It's right there in your synonym finder. So here we see that Adam was put into a deep state of brain death. No wonder when the first, in, sec, in 2 Corinthians 3, 14 and 15, in reading of the Old Testament, your minds are blinded with what? Death. Now you understand the sentence of death that you were under, that it's a brain death, a deep sleep. This is the only way... That, that Lucifer could do his number through Eve was that Adam was in a deep sleep. You see, this is also explained in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, where in Job chapter 1, Satan could not penetrate Job. And Job was living in a perfect state. Job chapter 1, verse 10. Let's turn to that. And it says... Satan answered Yahweh and said, well, let's, let's look at uh, uh, verse 8. Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? And that's the way Adam was. This is really talking about Adam. A perfect and upright man, that's what Adam was before his deep sleep. One that feareth Yudhe Wave and is chewest and hateth evil. That's what Adam was. So Satan had traveled all over the earth. And Satan answered Yudhe Wafe and said, Does Job fear Yudhe Wafe for nothing? In verse 10, Satan talking, Hath not thou made an hedge about him and about his house in bed? And should all that he have on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land verse 11 but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face okay so he went on and gave Job over to him and took all he had we know that that applies to us when we have sent but in the meantime I took you back to Genesis where it all begins in Genesis, it all begins in the garden. Your full understanding. So here you have a situation of Adam having a hedge about him. And Satan couldn't penetrate it. And Satan was afraid to come up to Adam directly anyway because of his reputation of being a perfect man and hating evil. So Satan was afraid to approach Adam because Satan didn't know that Adam was in a deep sleep suffering from necrosis and suffering from brain death. But he didn't know Adam was brain dead. So what he did was go to Eve to make his play and then leave it up to Eve. To, of course, he also, in the meantime, simultaneously planted two seeds into Eve. He planted the philosophy, which was a seed, his branch of knowledge, philosophy, coming out of uh, the tree of good and evil, which he ate from. 
And then he planted his physical seed into Eve. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. Matthew 13, 25. And it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. See? But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So you see, what appeared through Eve was both the tare and the wheat, which was both Cain and Abel. That's what appeared. See, the enemy sowed his seed in that woman while we slept. Here's that sleep again. Here's that same sleep. At whatever point in history you wanted to put it, I'm showing you this happened from the beginning, and it's happened all along the way for 6,000 years. These last 5,995 years, this same act has been going on. They did it to us when we were brought over here 437 years ago. They sowed a physical seed and their philosophy. All they did was repeat the grand experiment from the garden as the descendants of Cain. These are the descendants of Cain. So they showed that they still had the, the, the divine protection of my mark was within themselves by repeating it on Judah, who was chosen to be the ruler. That's who you are in America. So they, they just did it again. And the same enemy, the same tears, the same seed going forth. So now it's time for them to, to both the wheat to stand up. So what happens? The tears like Rosier and Lord Clark and Ricky Ricardo and Gene Solomon, Anthony Solomon, and uh, Freddie Gaines and Michael Mathis and Abi and all those different folks are the tares. Say they would spring up together. So how can I spring up and cause you to spring up and you think they're not going to spring up? Well, I know the fact you suffer from necrosis, you couldn't put all this together and you didn't know when to take a look at it. Now you can understand why I didn't allow the angels to come and say, reap the harvest. Because you didn't know who was who. I told you all the time you didn't know. I used to teach you all the time about Job and said, you can't recognize Satan. But I know him. They're right in here. I told you all the time for years. It's on the tape. It's there clearly. I taught you from the beginning. Satan is right in here with you. I told you that through the years that if I got rid of every devil in that temple, that the last person standing next to me would be a devil. Because he's not going to leave until he has no choice. And I'm removing Wahl. I've already done it. It's in the ether. I remove Wahl from his forehead and his descendants. So at any rate, I've given you the teaching, but you never really understood, as usual. So in the meantime, here we have Adam in a deep sleep. And Lucifer has done his number on Eve. So in two seeds, simultaneously. So Eve had was a gift, excuse me, Eve was a gift to Adam from Yuhei Wafe. Being her first appearance on the planet, that made her a virgin for Adam. Poor fella, he had to come second. I know some of you might laugh, uh, but she had two men. She had Lucifer and she had Adam. And she had children for both. She's thus declared to be what? Mother of all living. And that seed in her and that thought and that philosophy in her exists till now because I had so many women ask, why can't we have more than one husband? Since the law of Israel is that you can have more than one wife. Why can't we have more than one husband? She's talking from the mouth of Eve from the beginning. It's okay, that's not my subject, but I had to hit it. You know I have to tell the truth, so I had to hit it. But it's a thrill for her to have two, because they sing songs about it all the time. You know, they sing songs about how the Iceman buys this, and, and uh, the, the Milkman buys this, and the Mailman takes care of the rent, and the other one, Grocery Man, well, he takes care of the groceries, and the Insurance Man, he takes care of the insurance, and the Mechanic takes care of the car. <laughs> I mean, uh, she laughs about this all over the world. That's why I, I use the term Eve, because, you see, this deep sleep is on. 
And I come paying for all of you all's iniquities. I'm in prison for your iniquities, not for anything I've done. Every one of you know I'm innocent of anything. You know it. Everybody knows it. Rutger knows it. Uh, Scruggs knows it. Uh, the prosecutor and the government. Everybody knows it. You as Hebrews, people out in the street, you know in your heart, you know in your mind, I'm innocent. In the meantime, you're suffering from a deep sleep. I'm fighting that deep sleep that you have been suffering from. Oh, I know this, this class is shocking, but I'm glad it's being preserved and being taped because the planet needs this one. No one else can teach it. I've been waiting for someone else to teach it. Since no one else has, I have to come on and teach it. No one else can. Then after you move pl past the brain dead, you get off into number two definitions under death, and it tells you the 14th Hebrew letter is noon. Death is under noon. Therefore, yud Wafe put Adam to sleep and caused him to suffer necrosis, brain death, and therefore, this explains another mystery that I taught you during this last feast of tabernacles, I believe, and therefore the descendants of Adam are lame from the womb, as you find in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 2. That lame man from the womb are all of Adam's descendants. That means inside the womb, you're under this deep sleep. You're under the, under the sting of noon. And a certain man in Acts 3, 2, and a certain lame man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. That's my people begging in America, want to be carried by America, want loans and grants and help and, and, and welfare and, and everything else, but get up and walk. Don't want to get up and walk. Or hang it on right now, though they know I'm here teaching them a message called get up, a get up message. But they are suffering from this deep sleep. So I'm in the process of telling you something. Now you just found out this deep sleep is called noon. That's why in the beginning, some of you were trying to call me that noon. And I resisted right away. And I corrected you real quickly, very shortly. I let you know I'm that noon so feet. Because noon so feet is the final, the termination, the end of the sleep that you under. Because, see, I'm the first one to gain victory over that death. So therefore, I'll let you know I'm bet noon so feet. Okay? I'm the first begotten of the dead. Revelation 1, 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And it says, And from Yudhe Wafe bet noon so feet, Yudhe Wafe, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's what I'm doing. I'm washing you of your sins from your own blood. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But now is Yudhe Wavhe bet nun so feet, Yudhe Wavhe, risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. Them, T H. Them, them that slept. Who are? Who is this them? The descendants of Adam. Isn't this exciting? Isn't this earth-shaking? If you don't know it, I do. And of course, you are sitting there shouting in your seat inside your mind. You have to be shouting the victory over death inside your mind because you didn't know any of this. Now I'll drop another secret on you as to why I wouldn't teach any of this before my incarceration. I told you I will not encourage you to learn Hebrew. I dissuaded you from learning Hebrew. I dissuaded you from learning the Olive Bates because I knew that Satan was sitting there with us, just as black as the rest of us, brown and red and yellow as the rest of us. I knew he was in there. And had I revealed this knowledge while he was there before my incarceration, he would have had two powerful tools to fight me with. 
and then I would not have been able to overcome him in trial as I'm overcoming this whole planet. I'm overcoming death as prophesied. See, it was really I had to fulfill prophecy. And if I break prophecy, then I could not overcome him. It's not that he would have too much, but it would be extremely difficult, especially not fulfilling prophecy. I, had, I didn't come to break the law or destroy the law, but I come to fulfill it according to Matthew 5.17. So let's move on now. Here we have Adam being unaware that his head was removed from around him. As you, I gave an example in Job just a few moments ago. Which allowed Satan to lay hold on Adam through Eve. So when Lucifer tempted Adam concerning the law of Yuhe Wafe, he, you know, through Eve. When Lucifer tempted Adam through Eve concerning the law of Yuhe Wafe, his mind was blinded by the mark of noon. So he was under the sting of death. Now let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 and 56. Turn to that, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, yes, verse 55 and 56. Now let's read. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin breaking the laws of Yuhe Wafe, as from the beginning, in the garden. And the strength of sin is the law. In other words, what eliminates it is the laws of Yuhe Wafe. Now, Adam was already perfect, and he wasn't ever going to sin. So that's why Yuhe Wafe put him in a deep sleep and let him suffer from the closest, so that you could learn this valuable lesson to never be tempted. Because Lucifer had already tempted a third of the angels in heaven to listen to his philosophy and was cast down to the earth for it. Okay, he was already cast down for that. But he wanted to set up a kingdom in rivalry to Yuhei Wafe, which was in total opposition. So he couldn't do that with a conscious man walking around on the planet. Just one man, that's what Adam symbolized. That's why it says through the scriptures, through one man sent in it in upon the earth. Through one man. Where is that? Through, you look it up. Through one man, sin entered. And through one man, Adam, the second Adam, it will be removed. So I am that second man, that quickening spirit, to remove it from you. But in the meantime, think about it. Here is Adam suffering from this deep sleep. And here is the tempter coming to tempt. But he couldn't do it head up. Okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 21. Because in verse 20, I let you know I'm the one that's risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So this didn't happen before. It's happening now. This is the only resurrection because noon was never removed or we would have read about it. It would have been recorded. So noon was never removed from the descendants of Adam. For as in Adam all that. See, in Adam, that means coming from his seed. Coming right from his seed, from his loins. For as in Adam all die, born dead. Even so, in Yudei Wafe, Betnun Sophie, Yudei Wafe, shall all be made alive. Okay? Now, but every man, in verse 23, in his order... In his order, there's a time for each one of you to be resurrected. You hey why they Beth new soul feet being the first fruit. Afterwards, they that are mine at my coming. Okay? So this, this big act has to happen only at my coming. It's obvious it didn't happen 1,900 years ago. That's rather clear. It didn't happen. Or we would just all be in heaven, conscious, wide awake. Wouldn't be no mentally and spiritually dead so-called black people in America. There would be no waiting for a resurrection. It never happened. So I'm bringing it about to happen. I'm the only one. Only one was born and would be born who would have the knowledge and be revealed the knowledge to bust these seals, break them, loose these seals, and remove the sting of death from you. Noon. What a class this is. So here we have, under the sting of death, 
in First Corinthians 15, verse 55 and 56. I read that to you. Here we have, in 6,000 years, you've been in a grave. You've been in a 6,000-year-old grave. That's why people are buried six feet instead of five, four, three, two, or one. They're buried six feet as a symbol of being 6,000 years under the sting of death. That's when the resurrection would come, is at the 6,000th year. Now you know another secret. Adam's descendants' minds are blinded in the reading of the Old Testament until this day, as we just read to you. And this can only be done away through me, as I have just made that clear to you in 1 Corinthians 15, 26. So Adam, a dead mind, suffering from brain death, was given rulership over Eve and their descendants through Seth. Now, the descendants of Adam, even who are Seth's children, they were all put under the mark of the beast who was Cain, which was Wav. And I carried you through that the last time I talked with you last Shabbat, which is going on until this day. That's why Revelation 12, 9 was effective that Satan was able to deceive the whole world because there was no conscious man walking around to prevent it. So I'm the first begotten of the dead, the first fruits of the dead, of them that slept. Therefore, I'm a conscious man. So Satan can't get away anymore. And I'm, what am I doing? I'm, I'm resurrecting the seed of Adam. The children of Adam are being resurrected into consciousness. So as I resurrect you into consciousness, then... Satan's effect of rulership is gone. He can't rule with consciousness running around. Now, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, this is explaining about the children, the descendants of Adam, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That, who are they talking about? Me. Yudhe Wafe, Beth Nun, Sophie, Yudhe Wafe did the same thing. Came through flesh and blood, suffered from the same condition. That through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. That is the devil. It's the devil who has the power of death. Now, in verse 15, you must get this. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's why the so-called black man of America is willing to stay in bondage right now under the white man's rulership, though it's evil and it's destructive for him. And it's his time to come to glory and rule. He is under bondage. They pretended to free you in 1865, knowing full well you were suffering from necrosis, brain death. And in no form did they attempt to remove it because they couldn't anyway. And it was to their vested interest for not one of you to be conscious. And that's why you got the signs of, of through Abraham. He was to kill his firstborn son that was the blessed one, not Ishmael, but Isaac, the one through whom the blessings were to come. Abraham was ordered to sacrifice him, to kill him. And Abraham, being obedient, took him up to the sacrificial altar and uh, was about to kill him, was bringing his knife down. And Yuhi Wafe stopped him and told him there was a ram in the bush. That ram represented me, that there would be one who would be sacrificed. See, he was trying to eliminate the sting of death. Abraham wanted to eliminate the sting of death. But he was only following orders. He didn't have a total understanding. But what happened was a sign was set up right then through the ram in the bush. And that represented me, that there would be one who would die for the sins and abolish death. Second Timothy 1.10 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, and we read, Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, 
not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Yudhe Wave Bethnum Sophie Yudhe Wave before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Yudhe Wave Bethnum Sophie Yudhe Wave, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through this gospel that I'm giving you right this minute. Right this minute. So as I talk to you, I'm removing from you forever noon, the mark of noon. It's gone. It's in the ether, and now it's in you. It's gone because I have the power and authority to do so. My father, Yuhei Wafi, gave me all power and authority over all things, and I'm executing that. So, though you've been suffering this death for 6,000 years, tonight it's gone from you. I'm speaking it to the ether. I'm speaking it to Tate. And this will be next week's, synoptically from this, will be next week's information. I know some of you understand what I'm saying. So, I have gained power over noon with bet through you, hey, Wafe. So I'm saying again, death, where's your sting? Who taught me? They didn't teach me these letters, yet I have learned them. I am now learned, but not through man. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 15. John chapter 7, verse 15. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? So all of the esoteric masons, all of the esoteric scholars of this world, all of the esoteric ones of this earth, are now marveling at me. How could this brain-dead man, who on their carnal level think was born in Enid, Oklahoma, 56 years ago, being one of the seed of Abraham brain-dead, We've gone and checked his background. We have followed him from birth up to this prison, all of his friends. And we know that he was just as dead as they were. There was no indication from any of them that he was conscious. So I've gained my victory in the tomb. I was unable to reveal any of this to you before my incarceration. I had no knowledge of it. But upon my incarceration and in this tomb, it's all been revealed to me. Thus, I have gained power and the victory over death and this grave. I also have something very exciting to share with you uh, next week on my resurrection. Because I'm truly, I am truly going to rise on the third day. The morning of the third day. That's a fact. I can speak that emphatically. That is a fact. With that, I've spoken much longer than I dreamed that I would. I had no idea that I would be revealing all that I have revealed to you tonight. This is a priceless class. This is a priceless tape. Uh, I want this in manuscript form, and it should go around the planet. Every lodge must have it. And I know that you will take advantage of it. You that are here, under the sound of my voice, are indeed the blessed ones. You're blessed by being here, and I love you eternally. You're my wonderful children. Welcome to the land of the living. For you will be able to study like you have never studied before, understand like you've never understood before, and trust in Yudhe Wavi like you've never trusted before, and accomplish miracles like you've never accomplished before and be able to go out among the peoples of the earth and carry my message, my good gospel to the world. I love you eternally. Shabbat Shalom. This concludes In the Garden, The Sentence of Death.